الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذا سالك عبادي عني فاني قريب اجيب دعوه الداع اذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون وقال الله تعالى في مقام اخر وكلوا واشربوا ولا تسرفوا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب الله سبحانه وتعالى says that O oh my beloved صلى الله عليه وسلم when my servants, my slaves, they ask you about me tell them that indeed I am near in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself he says without mentioning to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when they ask you, indeed I am near. Mujibu da'wat al-da'i ida da'an. I accept the call of the caller when he calls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves that he ask him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he likes the fact that we back to him. Because we are slaves and Allah is Allah. Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, antum al-fuqara wa ila Allah. And O people, the joke, you O people, you are beggars in front of Allah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants that we act like beggars to Him. And what beggars do is that they beg. And when people do not ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gets angry with them. Okay. And the second thing that we have been mentioning, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that we follow the sunnahs of his beloved of Allah of his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Ta'ala wants from all of us that we follow the sunnahs of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Ta'ala loves the people who follow the sunnah of the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Ta'ala says that if you follow the Sunnahs of my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then I love you. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُفْرِقُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ زَنُوبَكُمْ That, O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell the believers that if they claim to love Allah, what should they do? Follow me. And then return, Allah ta'ala will love them and forgive them of their sins. So these are the two things that we should really take care of in our daily lives. Number one, follow the sunnahs in each and everything that we do. And two, make sure that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all the times. And we when we combine these two things, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy will descend upon us. So, so far what we have been doing is that we have started from the day and we have tried to learn some few simple sunnahs that we can implement in our daily lives and the things that we already do. They're not like anything that we do as a new thing. We already do that. We get up in the morning, go to the toilet, we uh, we relieve ourselves, we wash ourselves, we make wudu, we get out of the toilet, we go out of the house, we get into the car, we go into the masjid, we stay in the masjid, we come back to the house, we wear our shoes. We already do all of these things. All what we need to do is to make sure that we do it according to the sunnahs. And what we need to do is we need to make sure is that we learn the du'as that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us for all of these things. So all what we are doing is not just for to listen. It is something that we should learn and this is something that we should implement. So last time what we did was that we, we did the dua and the sunnahs of coming out of the masjid and entering into the house. So before we move on 
one dua that is related to the time that we are in or related to the uh, time of the year that we are in is that we are in the month of Rajab. And Rajab is a month that is very close to another blessed month which is Ramadan. Rajab itself does not have any, absolutely any significance as such. Because some people, they think that Rajab, there are a few things that need to be done in, in Rajab. There is one significant event that happened in Rajab, which is the Mi'raj of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Mi'raj, to celebrate Mi'raj as such is nothing that has been proven in through Sunnahs. Or none of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu madrain, they had celebrated Mi'raj. So there is no as such significant thing to do in Raja. I mean, there are people who celebrate a few uh, occasions in Raja. Majority of them are bid'ahs. Some people, they, uh, they cook like certain things on certain days and then they distribute and things like that. It has absolutely nothing to do with our team. Absolutely nothing. They're all the da'at. If they are done with the niya of, of, uh, of reward, that this is something that has to be done in Rajab and this is some significant in the, significance in the deen, then they will become bid'at and that will be very, very dangerous. But if, like, if somebody cooks food and distributes every day in any way, then it's fine. But just to tie it to a specific day and then hoping that this has some significance in the deen, it has no significance in the deen. The Prophet Wasallam said that كُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ That every bid'ah is a misguidance and every misguidance is in the fire. So we have to be extra, extra careful. Sometimes shaitan, when he cannot distract us from doing good things, he ask us to do good things in the in the name of deen when there is when it has no position in the deen so we have to be extra careful with that as well so as far as the celebrating the mi'raj of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is no nothing proven from quran from hadith from the athar of the sahaba that they ever celebrated even even our islam Nobody celebrated the Mi'raj of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as such. It's a beautiful event. It's a very significant event. It's like an amazing event. You know, we love the event. But as far as celebrating that, there is nothing that's proven. So we need to, 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 uh, uh, to be aware of that. For one thing that what we do that is from the Sunnah is that Rajab is close to Ramadan. And Ramadan is the beautiful month. Ramadan is a beautiful month. And Ramadan has extreme significance in our deen. Ramadan is a month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sort of like reset our clock. All year long we sin. We disobey Allah ta'ala. We live a life of heedlessness. We live, live a life of ghafla. And we immerse ourselves in, in that filth of, in those filth of sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an opportunity in Ramadan. That we can reset our clock. That we can get rid of all the sins that we have accumulated in, in all year long. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's special mercy and his special rahmah, it descends in the month of Ramadan. And when a great event has to come, then Everybody prepares for that, that event for a long time. And for example, somebody has to get married. The marriage is like in two months from now. But people start talking about that, like that event two months before, even before that, sometimes six months, sometimes, sometimes a year before that. Oh, next year in June I have to get married. And they will, you know, make sure that they inform everybody, they need to make sure that everything is in place, etc. So whenever a great event has to come, then people start preparing for that event. And great, then the bigger is the event, bigger are the preparations. And there is, the Ramadan is one of the most, it's a, one of the greatest events in our team. It's one of the greatest events in our team. And another thing is that when something big start, has to come, the asar, the signs of that also start coming before that. For example, if 
the sun has to come out in the morning, then the light of that sun start coming on the horizon be like long time before the sun comes out. The light of the sun it starts coming out, it starts showing up on the horizon long, a day before the sun has to come out, maybe like say an hour before that. Because coming out with the sun is a great event. So the Ramadan is one of the greatest events. And Allah Ta'ala's special mercy it falls down in that beautiful month. But the asar, the signs of that mercy, they start showing up way before that. And it starts showing up as uh, as early as in Rajah. And that's why one of the du'as of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was that he used to make in Rajah and Sha'ban, the month for that follows Rajah before Ramadan, is that Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make dua, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajabi wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. That, O oh Allah, bless us, put send barakah on us in the month of Rajab and in the month of Sha'ban and take us to, the, to Ramadan. And take us to Ramadan. This was the significance of Ramadan. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to crave so much to be in month of Ramadan that he would start asking for, for, to be in that month of Ramadan way before Ramadan, as soon as in, in, in the month of Rajab. And he would say that, Ya Allah, put Barakah in this month that we are in, which is Rajab. And put Barakah in the month that's, that's coming after Rajab with the Sha'bah. And Ya Allah, then take us to Ramadan. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban so this is the only thing that we can look and see into the seerah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa that he would do anything in Rajah. And that is a dua. That's also a dua. And we are covering duas. So this is a dua that we should ask in this month. That Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balikna Ramadan. Ya Allah, send your barakah in this month of Rajab on us and send your barakah on us in the month of Sha'ban that's coming after this. And Ya Allah, give us the fee, give us, give us the opportunity that we can enter into Ramadan. Ya Allah, give us enough life that we be able to see Ramadan. Because, Ya Allah, ten months have passed since last Ramadan. And we have, we are full of filth of the sins that we have done in those ten months. Ya Allah, if we go back to you in this month or next month, Ya Allah, I don't know what state I'm going to go back to you in. Ya Allah, allow me, please give me an opportunity that you give us enough, give me enough life that I can be into in Ramadan when your mercy will be showering like anything. So that I need your mercy to clean my dead heart, to clean my filthy heart in that month. So Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balikna Ramadan. So, just moving on with the sequence of the day. So, once people come back in the house and we did the dua of entering into the house, uh, Bismillahi walajna wa Bismillahi kharajna. What is that? Allahumma inni as'aluka khair al maulaji wa khair al makhraji. Bismillahi walajna wa Bismillahi kharajna wa ala Allahi rabbina tawakkalna. So, once people are in the house, one thing that people may do is in the morning take breakfast. So there are sunnas and there are du'as of eating. It's not only for breakfast, it's for any meal. There are sunnas and there are du'as for eating, for, for taking the meal. And one of the du'as that the Prophet ﷺ would recite after looking at the meal, after just looking at the meal, when meal would be presented to him, then he would make a dua. And that was, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi razaqnihi min ghayri hawlim minni wa la quwa. That, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi razaqnihi min ghayri hawlim minni wa la quwa. Alhamdulillah, Alladhi razaqnihi min ghayri hawlim minni wa la quwa. 
You know what I was thinking the other day was that maybe all the du'as that we have done and all the sunnahs that we have done, maybe I can like put it down or maybe somebody can help me in putting that down and we can post it on our website inshallah so that you know people can read those and also memorize the du'as if, if, from, from there inshallah. But the idea is that we all memorize these du'as and recite these du'as at the time, at the appropriate times, right, inshallah. So, all praises to Allah, who gave me this risk, this provision to me, without any effort from me, without any qudra, without any power of me, uh, so without any, uh, without any control of me and without any power. That Alhamdulillah, الذي رزقنيه من غير حول مني ولا قوتي. So in this du'a, if you're looking to reflect on this in this du'a, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying he's accepting the fact that Ya Allah, I did not have any qudra, I did not have any control, I did not have any power. That I could get this rest, and it is you, Allah subhanahu wa taala, only you who has provided this food to me. So this is a sunnah that whenever a, some a meal is presented to you or meal comes in front of you or you have the meal that you're about to eat, you need to make this dua. That all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has provided this risk to me without me doing anything. Without me having any control over it and without me having any power over it. And this is something that that differentiates a Muslim with a non-Muslim, a believer from a non-believer. Because the non-believer, he feels that whatever he has, has gotten, whatever he gets, is from his own power, with his own power. He feels that he goes to work, he works hard, he gets the, like, the salary at the end of the month or whenever. And then he goes, he buys food and he takes it and puts it on, puts it on, on, on his plate and eats it. That's what his thinking is. The thinking of a believer is that, Ya Allah, I did not have any power. All what I have is from you. What all I have is from you. And whatever you have given me is your Rahmah, is your Father. It's your blessing. I could not have done anything to get that. I tried my level best because this dunya is Darul Asbab. I have to take means. But at the end, it is you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that who is providing me all of this, what I have. Right? Look and at one example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, which is a Qarun. What did Qarun do? Qarun thought Allah ta'ala had given him a lot of wealth. A lot of wealth, so much so that the keys of his prayers were so many that they were slaves of his who would carry those keys on their shoulders. Just the keys. Just imagine how much treasure he must have. And when he would go out into the streets, people would envy him. And you know, we wish, Ya Laita Lana Mithla Ma Uti Aqaroon, Innahu Ladu Hazmin Azim. People would say, Allah Ta'ala has quoted the people in the Quran, that we wish that we would be like Qarun, we wish that we would all, we would, we were also given what Qarun has been given. Right? But what Qarun thought that all of what he had was because of his own power. He would say, Innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. That it is only given to me because of my knowledge that I have. That's what people think. Right? People are PhDs. And you know, they would get some, they, they would get a job and then they would earn some money. Oh, it's because I'm so smart. It's because, you know, I'm PhD. It's because I'm an MBA. It's because I'm, I'm this and I'm that. I'm a, I'm an engineer or I'm a doctor. That's what people think. People become so arrogant that this, this car that I have and this house that I have and whatever I have is because of what I've done. People would look down upon other people, for example, a person sweeping the street. They would, look, they would look down upon that person because he feels that he hasn't gone to school, I've gone to school, I have a degree, I have such a big job. It's because of me, I have worked hard. This is what people think. 
People become like Harun. People literally become like Harun. When people have this arrogance, they become like Harun. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did He do to him? You know that, it's in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him drown into the ground. The earth split apart and he was... Uh, he went into the ground. So a Muslim is different from a non-Muslim. A believer is different from a non-believer. A believer knows that everything that he has is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that he has is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed him with that. He did not have any power to do anything and he will never have any power to do anything. And all what he gets is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All what a person needs to do is to take, is to make sure that he takes the means. It does not mean that people should not go to schools or should not go to universities or should not go to colleges. We have to do everything. We are supposed to take the means. We are supposed to like study. We are supposed to work hard. We are supposed to get good grades. We are supposed to do everything that is required from us. But at the end of the day, we also believe in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides us with everything. How many people are there who are PhDs and masters and MBAs who don't have a job? Just look around you. There are so many people who have a job and they lose their job. They're smart people. They're, 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 you know, they, they were doing good in their old jobs, but it's just that they had a cut and they asked them to leave. And then they don't get a job for months or years sometimes. Literally, some people don't get a job for a long, long time. What happened to their degrees? What happened to their PhDs? What happened to their masters, their MBAs? Oh, there's no use of all of those degrees at that very moment. So it's Allah Ta'ala who provides to people. There are so many people who have not, who do not have degrees, but MashaAllah, Allah Ta'ala has provided them a lot. So at the end of the day, it's Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala who gives. It's not people, right? People go and open their shops. They open their shops, but have people realize who sends all of these buyers into the shops? Who is putting into the hearts of the buyers that, you know, they have to go and, and buy from those shops? It's Allah. Okay? So, his wealth is not everything. His wealth is not everything. And the degrees are not everything. People can open shops with the wealth that they have, but it can, people can, you know, lose their businesses. They can invest a lot, but they can lose. One concept that's also in the minds of, that's also in the minds of the people is that you know if people have more, then they will get more. So if you put in money, then you will get more money. It's not true. How many people we have seen in the last three, four years who had millions? And they lost everything. Because it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was controlling everything. I've heard this incident from a, incidents from a couple uh, from a couple of people from a couple of ulama and mashayikh that somebody who went to Umrah in Ramadan so he was talking to another very pious man and he was uh, so this pious man was talking to the other person and saying and he was saying that you know it's Ramadan it was very crowded we need to make sure that we plan our day so that after Maghrib we eat quickly, right, because there's a lot of crowd, so, so that we can go to Taraweeh, you know, right after, you know. He was talking about these sort of things. So this other person was very rich, and they were all both going for Umrah. He said, you know, what are you talking about? It's all about money. It's all about money. If you have money, you'll get everything. If you have money, you'll get everything. So he said, you know, he tried to... Explain to him, no, it's not that, it's all Allah Ta'ala, we should, you know, make dua, we should be humble. No, no, it's all about money. He said, okay, fine. He said that when they, met, when they reached um, Makkah Mukarma and they were done with Umrah, he said at night or next morning, he saw that rich man, you know, sitting somewhere. And he looked very distressed and he looked very sad. So he asked him, what, what, what happened to you? He said, you were right. So what happened? He said, I, this morning at the Sahur time, I went down uh, to buy the food for, for my Sahur. It was such a long line, and by the time I came to the counter, the alarm was called out. He said, I did, could not to, uh, take my Sahur this morning. I had money, I had everything, but I could not take any food. 
So you were absolutely right. It has happened to me as well. Once we were in, in Canada a long, long, long time ago and we were driving and I had like, we had cash, we had credit cards, we had everything. But you know, we could not even find an exit which we could take and you know, get a restaurant and eat. And we were driving for like an hour and we were starving. This money is not everything. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who provides us with food. And this is what Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is making dua. That alhamdulillah alladhi razaqnihi. Min ghayri hawli minni wa la quwa. That all praises to Allah who, who, who has provided me this risk. If Allah Ta'ala had not provided me this risk, what could I have done? I could not have done anything. Right? Everything is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Everything is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So when you, when people start eat, have to start eating food, the dua that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make, there are, there are many duas that you, you may find in the books of the duas. But one of the very, very simple du'as that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make was Bismillahi wa ala barakatillahi. That in the name of Allah and with the barak of Allah. In the name of Allah and with the barak of Allah. Bismillahi wa ala barakatillahi. We should recite this du'a or we should memorize this du'a. Bismillahi wa ala barakatillahi. That I start eating with the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I want that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, I request ya Allah that you send down your barakah on this world. And we have already spoken about barakah. Now barakah is a concept that is only in our deen. You will not find this word in English, you won't, won't find this word in possibly any other language. Maybe, I don't know of any such word. Blessing, but it has no, I don't know if you look into the dictionary what blessing means. It would mean anything but barakah. Barakah is a beautiful concept. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for barakah in the food, that means a lot of things. But before that, we start with Bismillah. We start with Bismillah. That I start in the name of Allah. Again, the same recognition, the same thought, that this food that is, has come to me is from Allah ta'ala. It's from Allah ta'ala. If you reflect on the food that has come in front of us, have you ever thought about how, how has that food come to us? Somebody, you know, some farmer at, inside some place, he must have worked hard in his, in his land to dig the seeds. He must have worked like day and night. Then Allah Ta'ala must have sent down rain. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would have made that seed to, uh, to split apart. And a plant must have cut, come out of that. And somebody after, you know, that plant must have grown full, then somebody must have gone and have cut and, you know, worked hard on that and have taken it to the markets and the market. I don't know for how many stages that food must have gone through before it has come to the grocery store that I went to and then I bought it with the risk that Allah Ta'ala has provided me and then I bought it home and somebody must have cooked, maybe our wives have cooked that food for us, and then now it has come in front of us. It has gone through so many stages. So we recognize this very fact that this food that is in, is in front of me is from Allah Ta'ala. It is from Allah. The drink that is that has come in front of me is from Allah. I've told you many times that this water that we drink, it's a huge blessing of Allah Ta'ala. If, there, if we don't get water, for a few days we will die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ That I have made, given life to everything with water. If people do not have water, then they will die. If people get diarrhea, right, and if they are not given uh, liquids, then they can die because of dehydration. The so water is an essential element of every, every, of, of every living being. Plants, human beings, animals. So this water that is all, that has also come in front of us is also a huge blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not sent clouds to, to, get, to, to give us rain. What if there were no seas? What, what if there were no rivers? As I said, there are still places in the world, 
in this day and age, when people go and travel long distances to get water from the wells, and that water that they get is not the clean, fresh water, the, the, what, what we drink. It is brown, dirty water. And they save it, and they go and they collect once a day. And then, like this one pot that they have, they use it for, for the whole day. The huge blessing of Allah Ta'ala. So this food and the drink that is come in front of us, it's a huge blessing of Allah. And that's what we recognize. Bismillah. That, Ya Allah, you have given me this food. First of all, I'm, we are already thanking Allah Ta'ala for giving us this risk. But then when we start eating that, we start with the name of Allah. Bismillah. Ya Allah, in your name, I start, I start eating this. So this is the recognition and this is the gratefulness that we are showing to the, to the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this risk. And if you do not mention the name of Allah Ta'ala on that, you know, what, what ungratefulness is that? There's a huge ungratefulness to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's blessing. And we know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has said in the Quran that if you give me shukr, if you do shukr of my blessings, I will increase you in your blessings. But if you are ungrateful, then I can take away your blessings. Then I can take away your blessings. Right? One of the sunnahs of eating is to sit and eat. Is to sit and eat. There is no baraka in eating while standing. Because that's also a quote-unquote fashion. People eat while, while they're standing. Especially in the, in the parties, in the weddings, in the walimas. You know, it's a buffet system. There's, people don't even provide like seatings for people to sit and eat. Just to follow the, the culture of that's not our culture. So there is no barakah in eating while standing. So we should sit and eat. We should sit and drink. We should not eat and drink while standing. Because there is no barakah in that. So one of the sunnahs of eating is that we should eat while sitting. There is also a sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to eat together. He would eat with his families. I mean, there is also a culture that, you know, people would eat at their, at their own time. There's no barakah in that as well. If they're you're not with your family, if you're with your friends, okay, then sit together and eat. It's also a sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to eat from the same plate. So if you are, you have a family and your husband, wife, they should eat from the same plate. That's also sunnah. There's a lot of barakah in that as well. It's also a sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to eat from what is in front of you. That is it's like the whole plate, for example, has the same food, same type of food. There's sunnah to eat from, in, from, uh, from what, is front, what is in front of you. For, but if there are different things, for example, there is like a biryani in front and you know there is like... It's the name of this one. Korma at another side and you know you have like a barbecue at another side of the plate then it's okay to like pick from the other sides of the plate but if the, all of the plate has the same type of food then it's sunnah to eat what's in front of you. It's sunnah to eat with your right hand. It is sunnah to eat from your right hand. It's such an emphasized sunnah that once uh, uh, there, was a, there was a person who was eating with his left hand in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Prophet Sallallahu said to him, you know, eat with your right hand. Eat with your right hand. And he, out of arrogance, he said, I cannot eat with my right hand. <clears throat> out of arrogance. He could eat with his right hand, but he said, I cannot eat with, with my right hand. The Prophet Sallallahu said, okay, be like it then. And after that, he was never able to use his right hand in his life after that. So we should eat with our, with our right hand. We should drink with our right hand. So there are some sunnahs of eating. Eat while, sit and eat. And it's better to sit on the floor and eat. It's, it's, it's okay to sit on the table as well. But it's better that you sit on the floor and eat. Sit with, with, uh, with family. Eat from the same plate. Eat from what's in front of you. And it's also sunnah to eat less. It's not a sunnah to like to, to just fill your stomach so that you can't even breathe after that. So it's sunnah to eat less. 
Prophet ﷺ said that a few morsels should be enough for you. But if you have to eat more, if you have to eat more, then fill one-third of your stomach with food, one-third with water, and leave one-third for air. That's the max that you should eat. The best is that you, 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 you a few luqaymat, a few morsels should be enough for you. And if we really look into our diseases, the majority of the diseases are because of overeating. Blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar, well, sugar possibly no. Allah Allah. I'm not a doctor. But like majority of the diseases that we have are, is because of overeating, excess eating. Right? So if we follow the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, eating to the minimum, what can, which, what, that is enough for us to, to, to live normally. There are some people who are sick. Some people who don't have like an urge, they have to eat. So don't like leave eating. It's also a blessing of Allah Ta'ala. It's a blessing of Allah. Do eat. And especially, I would say, eat at the places where you should, you should, you should eat. For example, if you go, to the graduation ceremony of a of a of a hafiz. It's baraka in that in, in in that gathering. You know, people go to these sort of gatherings, for example, the end of like the uh, the, the ending of Bukhari Sharif in a madrasa. In the graduation ceremony of 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 hey, if somebody has become a hafiz, for example. These sort of ceremonies, there is a baraka, there is nur of Allah, there is rahmah, there's mercy that's falling down on that. And also falls down on the food that's served there. People go and they don't eat. I oh, don't feel like eating. Come on, don't eat for your own pleasure and for your own desires. Eat for the sake of Allah. There's bark in that food. There's noor in, the, in that food. Take that and absorb it in your heart. We don't know these things. When we go to the people, like, and uh, and and uh, and uh, 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 the people who are. Uh, at the, sorry, at the houses of the people who are pious people. Do eat. If some pious people give you, do eat. It has baraka. It has baraka. Our my Sheikh says that, you know, he loves the fact that somebody who is, who prays five times a day has cooked this food. Can you imagine? Just a person who prays five times a day. He loves the fact that somebody has given him food and somebody has cooked for him food who prays five times a day. Because it has barakah. And forget about, you know, just, just think about the person who prays five times a day. There's a person of taqwa and who is, for example, an alim or an alima. If there's an alima who is cooking the food saying, Bismillah, with all her taqwa, right, and cook, is cooking for you, you should take, you should eat all of that. You should know all of that. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says in the Quran, that, Ya ayyuhu rasul that, O oh, Prophets, eat from what is good and do good actions. Our ulama have said that good actions has direct relationship with eating, with good eating, with tayyab eating. So when people, they take in food that's good, then the result is that they, they will get, that Allah Ta'ala will give them tawfiq to do good actions. And if people take in bad food, then the result will be bad actions. So we should try to take in food that is fire food. And especially, for example, if you go to for Umrah, for, to Makkah and Medina, you should try to eat more food than you than you do at your home. In Makkah and Mukarram especially, it's a dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. He made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, give the inhabitants of this, uh, this city uh, Risk, provision, give them fruits. Just the food that served in Makkah Mukarama has the asar, has the effects of the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Don't, I, mean, I won't recommend fasting in Makkah Mukarama. I would say just eat, unless it's Ramadan. Well, it's up to you. <laughs> I'm not saying it's haram. People misunderstand as well. But there is, what I'm saying is that there is barakah in the food. When you go to Medina Manawara, eat. When you go to the, to, to the houses of the pious people, eat. If somebody serves you who is a pious, eat. If somebody pious person, he cooks for you, eat. Don't be stingy in eating in those places when you are at your own house. Then you should avoid like, like overeating. 
Because that's a habit. That's a habit. And also people who are cooking, they should make sure that they should start cooking by saying Bismillah. Because we know the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that anything that is not started with the name of Allah, then that is cut off from the mercy of Allah. Then there is no barakah, there is no that those special effects in that food anymore. So if we, 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 we start, if we have to cook, then we should start cooking by saying the name of Allah, by mentioning the name of Allah, saying Bismillah. And also when the food is presented in front of us, then we should start with Bismillah. And, fo- and we should follow all the sunnahs. We should follow all the sunnahs. It is also not the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to eat while taking a support of anything. He will never, he, he, he has never, never taken support of anything while he was eating. He said that I am a slave and I eat like a slave. I am a slave and I eat like a slave. So we should, we should show humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while eating. Another thing, that the food that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he liked, we should also like that food. Read Shema'il Tirmidhi, the Shema'il of Imam uh, Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi. He has mentioned all the blessed sunnahs of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Also he has mentioned the food that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam liked. Also the food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. They are all blessed food. They are all Mubarak foods. Zaytun, Teen, Fig, Olives, Milk. They are all Mubarak foods. There is Barakah in those foods. Even if you don't like that, everybody has his own, you know, likes and dislikes. But even if you do not like it by taste, at least like it with by your heart, for, with your heart. And take it as like this for the sake of baraka. If you don't like olives, just take olive once in a while. If you don't like figs, just take figs once in a while. If you don't like dates, take dates once in a while. If you don't like milk, then eat it. Mix it with something, but eat, but, sorry, drink it. Prophet ﷺ loved milk. And it is from the drinks of the paradise. And Prophet ﷺ had an, also had dua while drinking the milk as well. What is that? Allahumma barik lana fihi wa zidna minhu. That Ya Allah put barakah in it for us and increase it for us. This is how my Prophet ﷺ liked milk. Allahumma barik lana fihi wa zidna minhu. Allahumma barik lana fihi wa zidna minhu. That Ya Allah put barakah in this for us and increase it for us. Ya Allah, I'm drinking it now, but don't take this blessing away from me. Increase it, increase it for me. Take milk, honey. That's also, you want to call it food or drink, whatever, but it's also from the food of paradise. Take honey in any way. Fihi shifa'ul linnas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that it has shifa for people. It has cure for people, for diseases. So we should, all the food that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, or that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to take and he used to love, we should also, should try to consume that food as well. Just for the sake of barakah. To take in that barakah, to take in that, do with that intention. With that intention though. Because in the al-a'malu bin niyad. People get whatever they intend for. So we should follow all the sunnahs while eating. And we should start with Bismillah. And we should eat with our hands. There is nothing wrong with, with uh, eating with spoon as well, by the way. Because Prophet ﷺ also used tools. It is in the, in the hadith, it is in the seerah. Prophet ﷺ has used knife to cut, for example. He has used tools. So it is nothing wrong with, with, with I've seen Mashayah eating with the spoon. It's not against the Sunnah as such. Eating rice, for example, with the spoon. But if there is some food like a finger food, like bread, it is good to eat with hands. It's also good to eat rice with hands as well, if people can. But if people are eating with spoon, don't, don't look down upon them. If they, it is a possibility that they're eating with the intention of Sunnah. And it is a possibility that you are eating with your hands without the intention of sunnah. And they are getting the reward and you are not getting the reward. Right? This all depends, it all is based on the intention that people have. 
So eat, eating with the, with, with the right hand, with the hand, with three fingers. It's also sunnah to eat with three fingers and not use the, all five fingers. For example, if you're eat, eating bread, then eat with, with three fingers. Just like use three fingers and take the, you know, the salad along with that and eat. Whatever you're eating. If you're eating rice, then use three fingers if you're eating with your hand, with the intention of sunnah. And this next part of the dua is what? Bismillahi wa ala barakatillah. That, Ya Allah, what I also want is that I need barakah in this. And as I said, barakah means a lot of things. And barakah, one of the concepts of barakah is that little is enough for us. That little is enough for us. For example, last week, we ordered food for like 100, 120 people, like 200 plus people showed up, but still we had to go and distribute. This is barakah. That there is little food, but it's enough for everybody. We are eating, it's little, possibly little food will be enough for us to give us energy. But if there is no barakah, it is possibility, possibility that we eat a lot, but we are not, still not full. We still have desire to eat more. Or it is also a possibility that I, I may eat it and I get a disease out of that. There are so many people who eat and they get diarrhea. The food that goes in, it rather, instead of giving them strength, it gives them diseases. That's lack of barakah. So what we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that, Ya Allah, you have given me this. I I start with your name, but what I also want is, Ya Allah, give me barakah in this food as well. Give me barakah in this food as well. Right. And one, another sunnah of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he has taught, that say if you forget saying Bismillah at the start, if you forget, then what you should do is that if we remember that in the middle of eating, still it's not over. The time, Allah ta'ala has still give us, given us an opportunity. And the dua to recite in the middle is Bismillahi awwalahu wa akhirahu. That I take the name of Allah in the beginning of it and in the ending of it. Bismillahi awwalahu wa akhirahu. Bismillahi awwalahu wa akhirahu. Okay, so if we forget in the beginning for some reason because we're busy talking or something, then if we remember it while we are eating, then we should recite this dua. Bismillahi awwalahu akhiru. This is what we need to do, my friends. This is something that is desired of us. This is something that Allah Ta'ala wants from us. We also know, we have mentioned that hadith last time, I guess, that when people start eating, then shaitan comes to them. And shaitan wants to eat with them. And he becomes their companion. And when people take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then shaitan runs away from that place and says, you know, I have no place on this mat, on this eating mat. If people take the name of Allah while entering the house, shaitan says, I have no place for me in this house. And all the things that we do, all the sins that we do, are because shaitan whispering that in our heads and our nerves following the shaitan. So if there is no shaitan, then it is, more possibility that, that we will not be indulged into all the sins that we are indulged in. Right? And we will have barakah in our food. So this is something that we all should do. And the sunnah of drinking is that drink in three sips. The first sip should be smallest, and then the second, and then the third. It is against the sunnah to eat like in, in, in one go. Even if you are thirsty. Even if you are thirsty, you really want to drink, the sunnah is to drink in three steps, at least. So one step, second step, and then the third step. And there should be a, we should breathe in the middle of all of these three steps. And it's a beautiful sunnah. And we should not look into the wisdom behind the sunnahs, but if we have to, what if that, there, there is something wrong in that, right? So the first small step that we'll take, you know, it's a possibility that when we get to know, oh, this juice that I'm drinking, oh, it has, it has gone bad, right? Anyway, I mean, we are not into finding logics, but the sunnah is that we should drink it in three sips. Say bismillah and, eat, and drink in three sips. S sit, uh, sit and drink. And then drink in three sips. The sunnah of drinking zamzam is standing. 
Although there is nothing wrong in, in sitting down and drinking as well. It is also proven from the hadith. But ulama have said that, that like it's better that people stand up and drink zamzam. And there is a dua for drinking zamzam. The dua for drinking zamzam, zamzam is what? Allahumma, huh? Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'an wa rizqan wasi'an wa shifa min kulli da. We need one hour lecture just to talk about this dua. But we should remember, we should memorize this dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'an wa rizqan wasi'an wa shifa min kulli da. Then, O Allah, grant me beneficial knowledge and vast risk. And, Ya Allah, give me cure from all diseases. Wa shifa min kulli da. See? And there is another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, that the, the water of Zamzam, lima shuriba lah. That it is for whatever it is, it is taken for. So whatever intention you make before drinking some stuff, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you that. For example, if you want to memorize Quran, you know, make to drink zamzam with the intention, Ya Allah, with the barakah of drinking this zamzam, you make it easy for me to memorize Quran, Allah ta'ala will help you in that. If, for example, you have to find a job, right, you're going out and you drink zamzam with an intention, Ya Allah, I'm going out to give an interview, Ya Allah, please put barakah in the zamzam and help me in getting me the job or making my interview successful. And Allah Ta'ala will help you in that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is such a mubarak water. It's such a barakah in this water that lima shuribana. Whatever it is drunk for, you will get that. So make an intention. Make an intention for the purification of your heart. Drink zamzam, Ya Allah, with this zamzam, please remove the filth of my heart. With the barakah of that. And Allah Ta'ala will help you with that. But we should also memorize the dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'an. Ya Allah, I know everything. I have knowledge of everything. But also grant me the tawfiq to act on the knowledge that I have. That's beneficial knowledge. For rizqan wasi'an. And Ya Allah, give me vast risk. Just like we made dua in uh, while making wudu. What was that? Allahumma inni as'aluka. Allahumma firli zambi. وَوَسَّعْنِي فِي دَارِي وَبَارِكْ لِي فِي رِسْقِي So Ya Allah grant me a vast house to live in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taught, teaching us a dua here while drinking zamzam. Ya Allah give me a vast risk and give me cure from all diseases. So zamzam is also shifa. Just like honey. Honey is also shifa. We don't use all of these methodologies. We all run after doctors but have you ever tried all of this? That Allah Ta'ala is saying, وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا Allah Ta'ala says that in the Quran. Who is more truthful than Allah in His speech? Who is more truthful to Allah than, his, than Allah in His speech? وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the most truthful. And when Allah Ta'ala is telling us there is shifa in honey, there is shifa in, in zamzam, we should try these as well, and possibly we will not have to run after doctors. So the sunnah of drinking zamzam is also drinking three sips, but all that while standing and facing the qibla, and facing the qibla. And the sunnah of drinking normal water is to sit down, say bismillah, eat, drink in three sips. And once people are done with eating and drinking, the dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us is alhamdulillah alladhi أَطْعَمَنِي وَسَقَانِي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ There might be different du'as as well. There are, in fact, in different du'ayat. But one of the simple du'as is Alhamdulillah الَّذِي أَطْعَمَنِي وَسَقَانِي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Alhamdulillah الَّذِي أَطْعَمَنِي وَسَقَانِي وَجَعَلَنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ All praises to Allah that He has given, He has allowed me to eat it. And he has allowed me to drink the drink the, the, that he has given me. And he has made me from the Muslimin, from the believers, from the sub people who submit to Allah. So it's a beautiful dua. First of all, it's, a, it's showing gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing that he has given us. Number one. Right? Number one is a, it's a, it's a great, it's a gratefulness, showing gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But number two is recognizing the fact that 
Sure, the food was brought in front of me. Right? But it would have been a possibility that I was not able to eat that food. Some people have allergies. Right? They have allergy with, for example, with nuts. Although they love nuts. But when they're brought in front of them, they cannot eat it. There are so many people who cannot eat a lot of things. They love it. But it's brought in front of them, they cannot eat it. So if Allah Ta'ala allows us to eat something, that's the blessing of Allah. That's what we are saying here. That's what we are recognizing. Alhamdulillah, alladhi atamani wa saqani. That all praises to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala who has also given me tawfiq or has allowed me or has given me this blessing that I, be, I was able to eat it and drink it. I was able to eat it and drink it. And the biggest blessing is what? For Jainani min al-Muslimi. What a huge blessing. That all praises to Allah who has made me from the people who submit to Him. I am not like an animal walking around. I recognize this fact that I am a slave of Allah. That He has given me this food. He provides me the power. He provides me the energy. Even the energy to eat. He provides me with all of the blessings that I have. And I submit to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the biggest blessing. I am not like an animal. I don't have any, you know, desires and wishes of my own. All my desires and wishes are submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen laa sharika la. Then indeed my prayers and my sacrifice and my life and my death is for Allah who does not have any partners. This is my life. And this is the biggest blessing. The recognition of this fact that I am a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has said this in the Quran. What is that? Wallahu yuhunnu an yahdi lil Islam. That it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown favors on people that He has guided us to Islam. Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana lihada. All praises to Allah who has guided us to this, this path. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessing that he has made us from the Muslim age. So this is something that we recognize at the end of eating as well. Alhamdulillah alladhi at'amani wa saqani wa ja'alani min al-Muslimin All praises to Allah who has allowed me to eat the food that he's provided. He has provided me with the food and he's allowed me to eat that food enjoy that food. And he has given me this drink and he's allowed me to drink it and has allowed me to enjoy that drink. And he has made me from the Muslim age. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to recognize this, this, this fact that these are all blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that we be able to do proper shukr of all of these blessings. We be able to do proper shukr of all of these blessings. And also that we be able to do it according to the sunnah of the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because that would be extra mercy from Allah. As I've always said, and I'll repeat it again and again, every sunnah acts like a magnet that attracts the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should do everything according to the sunnah of the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do it taking the name of Allah. Do it with the du'as that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us. And inshallah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala will put barakah in each and every single thing. That we'll do in our lives. Wa akhru da'ana. And alhamdulillahi. Rabbil alayhi.